This presentation is brought to you by Zachary Ross, an international psychology PhD student with the Chicago School of Professional Psychology. I hope you enjoy. Greetings class. Today I'm going to be presenting on the core humanitarian standard, also known as CHS, and its application to the South Sudan conflict. I am Zachary Ross, and I hope you enjoy this presentation. So why a standard? Well, the evaluations of major responses to disasters and conflicts called for greater effectiveness, impact, accountability, and quality in humanitarian action. Standards on quality and accountability helped organizations deliver these. So between 2011 and 2014, there was a call for greater coherence among existing standards as a single coherent and easy to use standard, which is more likely to be put in practice by all. The CHS is a collaboration between HAP International, People and Aid, the Sphere Project, and later Group URD that brings together and replaces the core standards these organizations separately develop. The CHS launched in December 2014 and is the result of a sector-wide collaborative process. So who is the standard for? Well, standard to begin with is for communities affected by disasters, conflict, or poverty. The CHS informs these communities about their rights, including their right to participate in the development of a project, and allows them to hold organizations to account. Secondly, is for aid workers. The CHS details what staff need to do and makes the application of standards simpler and easier. Lastly, is for organizations. The CHS details what policies, processes, and systems need to be in place to allow the aid workers to do their job effectively and for the communities to know and exercise their rights. The CHS uh, CHS will support development organizations as well as those responding to crises. So what does the CHS Alliance do for the CHS? Well, the CHS Alliance leads and facilitates the development, promotion, and maintenance of the CHS, including by providing training and other events on the standard. They also manage the development and promotion and maintenance of the CHS monitoring, reporting, and verification scheme. Other organizations, including the Sphere Project and Group URD, are promoting the CHS and will jointly support its revision process. Now, there are guidance, notes, and indicators for the CHS. And these help program staff and partners understand the attention and meaning of each CHS commitment key action and organizational responsibility. The tool supports users to implement them. So the standard, so as a core standard, the CHS describes the essential elements of principled, accountable, and high quality humanitarian action. Humanitarian organizations may use it as a voluntary code with which to align their internal procedures can also be used as a basis for verification of performance. Now the CHS spawned out of the Humanitarian Accountability Partnership International, also known as HAP International, which was established in 2003. and was the humanitarian sector's first international self-regulatory body. This multi-agency initiative was working to improve the accountability of humanitarian action to people affected by disasters and other crises. So currently, HAP has converted over to the CHS. Now, the Core Humanitarian Standard on Quality and Accountability, CHS, sets out nine commitments that organizations and individuals involved in humanitarian response can use to improve the quality and effectiveness of the assistance they provide. It also facilitates greater accountability to communities and people affected by crisis knowing what humanitarian organizations have committed will enable them to hold these organizations to account. So here is an illustration of the nine core principles of the CHS. So beginning with number one, humanitarian response is appropriate and relevant. 
Secondly, humanitarian response is effective and timely. Number third, humanitarian response strengthens local and capacities to avoid negative effects. Number four, humanitarian response is based on communication, participation, and feedback. Five, complaints are welcomed and addressed. Six, humanitarian response is coordinated and complementary. Seven, humanitarian actors continuously learn and improve. Eight, staff are supported to do their job effectively and are treated fairly and equitably. And lastly, resources are managed and used responsibly for their intended purposes. So these all center around four facets, which are independence, humanity, impartiality, and neutrality. And the core principle, the core foundation, is to be focused on communities and people affected by crises. So a little bit about the South Sudan conflict. South Sudan is a nation located in the central eastern region of Africa and has been embittered by uh, ethnic political conflict since 2013. The UN has accused the South Sudanese government of serious human rights abuses, along with the opposition forces that they are fighting against there. Now, although a peace agreement had been signed by both parties uh, in August of 2015, there has been serious grievances against the two in terms of civilian murders, systematic rape, torture, and mass destruction of property near the capital city of Juba. Thus far, there have been 2.4 million Sudanese displaced, with 200,000 whom had to flee their homes, and countless others who have been left behind. Uh, some of those have disabilities and impediments, and a lot of those people have been taken advantage of egregiously by perpetrators from both warring factions. Now, the president of the South Sudan Sudanese government is President Kiir, and initially he dissolved Sudan, um, which was originally 10 regional states, into 28 newly created states. And those had grave resistance from the populace there. Uh, the conflict had turned from a political to an ethnic political war, which was and is on the brink uh, of genocide for many of the ethnic groups there. Uh, the AU, the African Union, and the Sudanese government have yet to establish a criminal court for priests and prosecution of international crimes committed by both sides. And there has been substanti uh, substantial documentation on the recruitment of child soldiers, sexual and gender violence, restrictions on freedom of expression, and no accountability or justice for such human rights violations. Further, there have been targeted killings and systematic gang rapes seeking out a particular group of women, known as newer women, uh, for humiliation and punishment for their husband's participation in the conflict. So some current events. Recently, Makar, who was formerly the vice president uh, of South Sudan and now the leader of the opposition forces to the government there, uh, he had promised to merge the rebel fighters with the government forces. And he urged neighboring Kenya to step in for economic investment and rebuilding. Yet several opposition forces have defected, which has called tensions, while the Sudanese Central Bank has prioritized economic stability of farming and agriculture to avoid a famine. Currently, there is no consensus on how to move forward from the conflict. While the U.S. Uh, lifted trade embargoes from Sudan for the first time since the 90s, the UN Security Council has pushed for the AU to place an arms embargo and sanction against the South Sudanese government uh, and to aid in the implementation of a peaceful transition of power through an African Union trusteeship known as the Transitional Executive. Now, how did the CHS apply to this South Sudanese conflict? Well, with our first principle, humanitarian response is appropriate and relevant, there is high relevancy to a humanitarian response here in South Sudan, as the loss of life, sexual and gender violence is corroborated by survivors and is deemed appropriate by uh, many international bodies. Number two, humanitarian response is effective and timely. So due to the great amount of violence, there is no need for ineffective intervention, and time is not on the victim's sides. Uh, due to the loss of life there. 
Third, humanitarian response, strengthen local capacities and avoid negative effects. So communities in South Sudan need to be rebuilt. And But there's very sensitive mental states of victims there from trauma and could have adverse effects if not properly vetted for any intervention or program administered. Number four, humanitarian response is based on communication, participation, and feedback. So the inclusivity of the populace is important as the cultural views must be considered for proper viability. Uh, number five, complaints are welcome and addressed. So feedback from the community in South Sudan illustrates that there's a system of improvement for intervention and allows South Sudanese voices to be heard. Uh, this is a cultural element and needs cultural competency for any intervention. Number six, humanitarian response is coordinated and complementary. So using community members and day-to-day -day tasks illustrates and trains them for proper systematic procedure for future use. This is to create some sort of self-sustainability for the Sudanese population. Number seven, humanitarian actors continuously learn and improve. Uh, so participants of programs and interventions must apply learned outcomes for effectiveness to aid and coping strategies for victims of trauma in South Sudan. Number eight, staff are supported to do their job effectively and are treated fairly and equitably. So both community members uh, and outside participants must set standards to assisting interventionists and supporters as uh, protocols that must be tolerated. Uh, the people must be treated equally and, and fairly there, um, so not to offset any progress. Number nine, resources are managed and used responsibly for their intended program. So due to the poverty issues in South Sudan, there must be accountability for the handling of all resources in the program to establish fair distribution to all intended parties. Uh, the poverty issue is very grave, so we want to make sure that everyone there gets what they need in terms of resources. And lastly, here are my references. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and I appreciate your time and consideration. Thank you. This has been a presentation by Zachary Ross, an international psychology PhD student with the Chicago School of Professional Psychology. Thanks for watching.